Hello everyone, Pally Tip here. Welcome back to Dark Souls Remastered. We have a new playthrough going up on the channel, but I felt it was important that I talk to you first <laughs> because it's very likely we won't finish the game here. And I feel like if someone found that out a few episodes down the road, they might be a little upset. So let's spell this all out at the beginning. The idea for this run is something that I had been thinking about a lot. I wanted to challenge myself to try to get through Dark Souls without actually defeating any bosses myself, only using the jolly cooperation of those friendly NPCs that you see around the world. And I've tried this. Um, I rec oh, Shit, dude, I had like 20 hours of footage recorded of me attempting various things and trying to make it work. And inevitably, I gave up because... At, it got to the point where I had so much footage and I didn't accomplish my goal that I was really discouraged. But it was a really, really fun idea. So I'm going to show you how it worked and how I got to the place that I stopped because it was really fun. And I hope you like it. We are probably going to use some cheat engine because I am not going to farm enemies again to get specific weapons. I'm just not going to do it. If that bothers you, that's okay. I'm not bothered by that. You watch what you want to watch. That's fine. But without further ado, this is Dark Souls only defeating bosses with NPCs, letting them do most of the work, trying to make the game easy. We're going to be using some speed running tricks later on. There's also going to be a little bit of a gray area with the ceaseless discharge. I'm sure you already know what I'm talking about, but I hope you enjoy the ride nonetheless. This is our character. This is Jolly, named after the Jolly cooperation that we are going to have with some NPCs throughout the game. We're starting as a thief, and we are going with the gift of the Black Firebomb. And that is really important for us if we want to get by the first boss without defeating him. Of course, we're starting as thief, if you don't know already, because the thief starts the game with the Master Key, which is one of the most convenient items for actually maneuvering around the world in Dark Souls. So we have the Master Key by default. We get the fire bombs to do a little bit more damage here in the beginning of the game. And all we have to do is make it up to the first boss. As the door opens, we are greeted with our first obstacle. This is the first boss of the game. And normally you have to defeat this boss if you want to make your way through to leave the tutorial. But we're gonna get around that with one really easy strategy. We're starting off with fire bombs. It looks like I missed my first one, how embarrassing. And we're gonna be smashed into the ground. He's at half health and so am I. The odds are even, I guess a little bit. One more fire bomb after this one should be ultimate doom for him. But as the boss is dying, we're just gonna leave that game really fast. So the boss has technically been defeated. But, as you can see, he's still up there at the top. He's still alive and well. Everything is fine. And with that, we'll continue down our path. Now, normally this guy would just give us our S's flasks and the door to open, or the key to open up the gate right down there. But, because technically the first boss has fallen, even though he hasn't, he should give us the big pilgrim's key as well which means we can go ahead and just leave this area. We're done. We don't need to kill the first boss. We're gonna be leaving the asylum with the first boss still alive. Technically. Oh, it doesn't open from this side shit. Okay, I still have to run around. Through the fog we go down to the ground and through the door. My favorite part is even the music cuts out here. The music's like, wait, what the fuck did you just do? <laughs> the asylum demon still standing left in the wake of Jolly so she can pursue some cooperation up ahead. All right, rested at the bonfire. Unfortunately, we don't have enough souls to level up because we didn't really kill anything. I also want to grab these Hummer bones over here by the world's worst cleric. Um, just because we could use those to move around a little bit more efficiently, especially at the start of the game. But I'm actually going to be doing a relatively normal run here. I'm going to be making my way over to the Tauros Demon because we should be able to kill him without too much fuss. But don't worry, we're going to make him kill himself. It's going to be easy. I won't lay a hand on him. 
I am actually going to kill these guys just because I do feel like I need some souls to level up. Uh, we're also going to need a lot of repair powder throughout this run, so if I can just get a little bit of a head start on the soul collection, that'll make my life a little bit easier. Also, having more HP to keep myself alive is not a bad idea either. Almost died there to that firebomb. Let's go ahead and drink. I'm sure he won't hit us while we're drinking! I make a point of killing this rat too because rats have the best chance of dropping humanity early on in the game. Unfortunately, we didn't get any humanity there. Humanity, if you stack it up to 10, I guess each point of humanity, so maybe saying stacking up to 10 isn't entirely accurate, but each point of humanity that you have increases your chance of getting item drops. There is one particular enemy up ahead that we're working on getting towards right now that has a very coveted item for what we're trying to accomplish here. So the more humanity I can get in between me and him, the better off we're gonna be. I'm being very uh, cryptic on purpose. I'm sure many of you already know what I'm talking about though. That's down to the first bonfire, put one point into vitality. I'm also gonna try to do this skip for no real reason. Success! Hey, hey! How you doing, bud? Man, that feels good. Not only did I make the jump, but I killed the Black Knight. That feels so good. Uh, by coming down here, we're able to get the Blue Tear Stone Ring. Gives us more defense if our life is low. So if we get to a certain health threshold, it just makes it so we don't take as much damage. Normally, by the time you get to that point, I don't like that you can't skip that in the remastered version. Uh, normally, if you get that low on health, you're, you're kind of screwed anyway. But, you know, it saved me like once, so we might as well pick it up. Uh, as we enter this boss area here, don't forget there are two guys with crossbows sitting up top, and we want to take them out before we do anything. Also, some unwelcome guests trying to crash this party. You stay on your side of the farm! So this took me a really long time to actually execute. But there is an area where the Tauros Demon is susceptible to falling off the map. I got very good at fighting the Tauros Demon. Now watch, I'm gonna get hit by everything because I lost that skill. But the idea is that we want to trick him into thinking that we're advancing, so he jumps backwards. And we want him to jump backwards off of this edge right here. It is so much easier said than done. Sometimes doing this, I've walked right in and he's done it right away. Other times it's taken me like 20 minutes to actually get him to fall off. And I'm not sure what actually causes it. But it, see, there was the jump. Now we just need to make him jump back towards this ledge here rather than back down the middle path. Uh, also running a little low on Estus flasks. So uh, here's hoping. Could try to run at him. Run at the knee, run at the knee. Come on, come on, come on. Back up, bud, back up. You're scared, right? I don't think he's scared, boys. I'm gonna try to run right by him here. Yes, there we go, there we go, there we go. First boss defeated himself. I didn't lay a hand on him. Easy. Now we can come down here and we can talk to Sunbro and enable jolly cooperation in our world. By the way, that only took like three minutes. I'm pretty happy with that. That took me so many tries the first time. Holy crap, I actually got better at it. Uh, I would love to do some jolly cooperation, but... Fuck! Ah, yeah, try again. I, fa I failed the charisma check. Yes! Dope. So with that, we get the wipe soapstone, and we're going to be able to see his summon signs around the world here and there. Next, we have to get by this dragon. Easiest way to do that. We're gonna hug the right side here. I should have started running with full stamina. I didn't quite do that. Uh, once we get to this ledge, we're just gonna roll hard to the right. Avoid all of that fire. Then we can make our way around this way and wait for him to come down. Whenever he's ready. He's not coming down. Can I just run by? Oh, Lord. Oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Unless he does it again. Is he doing it again? Oh, yeah, that was fine. Everything's fine. After a short rest at the bonfire, all we have to do is get by this boar now. Easiest way of doing that is by climbing up these stairs on the right, making sure this dude doesn't hit you too much. 
and flipping past all the action here. I'm gonna try to close the door before the boar gets through. Hopefully that works out. Also just gonna stand here with my shield up. Nice kill with the gate, not too shabby. Uh, we don't need to fight those guys. We might wanna get that key there. Maybe, yeah, I'm gonna go back and get that key. Isn't the key right there by the gate? I don't remember. Most importantly, I need to rest at Andre's house because we're gonna need that teleport for later. Now, I want to stress that initially when I was doing this challenge run, remember, we're just recreating the challenge so you could see it, like, the concept of it. When I was initially doing the challenge run, I did this part maybe 20 fucking times. Because I was trying to get the channeler's trident that drops off of the one child kidnapper in this zone. And I was not successful. Initially with the challenge, I ended up going all of the way to New Game Plus and playing through the game again, attempting to get through some of the obstacles. So for instance, uh, spoilers ahead, I guess not really spoilers because we're gonna circumvent it by just getting a trident. But I got all the way to Smo and Ornstein and that was my first wall. Uh, no matter what I did, no matter what I tried, I could not get, I could not get some bro to kill Smo and Ornstein. He would always leave too weak. And at that stage of the game, you know, you don't have access to areas like the Duke's archives yet. At least I don't know how to speed run glitch through that area uh, without that being a thing. Um, so I wasn't able to get any of my party heals going or anything like that. I simply could not keep Sumbro alive long enough to deal enough damage to kill Smo and Ornstein. And that was the first really big obstacle. So I was hoping, at that point, just hoping, that the Channeler's Trident would kind of facilitate uh, the killing of that boss and make it easier. But getting the actual Channeler's Trident is so fucking hard because this is the only guy in the game other than maybe is, well, there's one in the depths. There is one in the depths, but I can't get to the depths because I can't kill that boss that drops the key for the depths. So that was another obstacle. I ran all the way through Blight Town hoping I could get up there, and I couldn't. Uh, but the Trident is a key component of making any of this work. So I did a few... That, bleh, oh, fucking shit. I did several attempts of just quitting out, restarting my game, quitting out, restarting my game, running up to this guy, eating as many humanity as I could, trying to get as close to 10 humanity as I could to increase our item drop chance and trying to get that trident more than fucking anything. Like it was the most important item. I could not get it to work. I could not get the trident to drop. But I know for sure that it does drop there because we've gotten it in other playthroughs in the past or on other live streams. I don't know where we got it, but there's evidence on the internet somewhere that I have once obtained that item from that enemy. I think the easiest way to handle this part is actually just going to be to run through and try to fight all the enemies in here. Oh, or I'll die again. Okay. Please move. Please move. Thank you. What the fuck? All right. Now as they come up, it's just a little hiya. <laughs> and then they fall down the stairs. And Oh, here comes another one. Oh, no. Ow! Oh no! Oh no! Alright, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Just lock on. Kill them when they come up. Wish I had a little bit more stamina for this. It's not going super well, but it, it's good enough. It's good enough. And previously, this was the moment of truth for me. Could I kill this guy? Could I get his lance? Could he seriously not fall down to where the Balder Knights are? That'd be... Uh, that'd be really swell. You know what? Fuck that guy for a minute. Let's go over here. Let's go ahead and free our friend. I say friend very loosely. Our temporary companion, Lautrec. Isn't that his name? That sounds right to me. He's behind this little secret wall. If you let him out, he can actually help you on this boss. If you need a little bit of extra jolly cooperation. I actually gave this about... I'm going to throw out a big number. It's probably not that many, but like 15 attempts doing the gargoyles with only Sunbro. Keep in mind, I did not have the trident. With only Sunbro, I tried this 
and it was not enough. Like he could not kill the gargoyles. And I was trying my best not to intervene. Like I wasn't dealing any damage, but I could like kind of aggro a gargoyle and make him run to the side to fight me. You know, I wasn't opposed to doing that kind of stuff. But even with that, some bro didn't quite have what it took to take him down. Can I have your stick, please? Mister, mister, can I have your stick? How dope would it be if I got it? Yeah, I, re I really wasn't expecting to. Really was not expecting to. I'm gonna take this down and uh, go get human form. Do you guys wanna see some fucking magic? All you have to do is take your worst item, but believe it can become your best item if you give it a chance. So if we just, if we just go ahead and drop that motherfucker on the ground and wait long enough, it may blossom into a beautiful item one day. That's weird, I think the item moved. Maybe that's a sign that it's been long enough. Oh, it would help if I picked up the item instead of, uh, instead of sitting down. Look at that! It became the item that we needed! Wow! What are the odds of that happening? Damn! Okay, yeah, I, I, I warned you. I warned you that was coming. You can't be mad at me. You decided to watch, okay? I've never actually looked at this dagger on the remastered version. It has some cool like little nicks and scratches on it. It looks like some of those are intentional, like some some carvings on it, some engravings on it. It's pretty cool, man. Uh, so I died on the way back up. Yeah, so uh, I guess that's what I get. That was some instant karma for me. But uh, you don't actually need the trident to do this first part at all. All you need is Lotric to go help you. So uh, we're in human form. We're going to go get some bro. We're going to go get our other co-op buddy. And we're going to get through this. No problem. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. And I'll do my best to commentate that action for you. Right after I kill all these motherfuckers again. Oh, uh, ah, it all hurts. It all hurts so much. Ah, the chair, the chair. Oh no, oh no, 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 this is bad. This is bad. This might be worse. Okay, okay, okay. Everything's fine. I don't think they know how to take ladders down very quickly. They're just gonna do it in a nice orderly fashion, making sure that no one gets trampled. That's very respectful of them. And that'll give us plenty of time to regenerate our stamina and make sure that we're a-okay. All right, everything's, everything's fine. So. Two summon signs up ahead. Lotrix is on this lower landing here. All we have to do is run right over here. And then we'll know if I was saying his name. I gotta go talk to him back at the Firelink Shrine. Blech. Oh, look at that fancy ass footwork right there. Hey, bud. Ah. Uh. Hello there. Don't kick him off the side. 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 Do you want to talk anymore? Don't kick him off the side. Don't kick him off the side. Anything else, sir? Are we good? Or... Okay. I'm really proud of myself, honestly. All right. There we go. Hey, bud. Welcome back. Night law trick. Dude, it feels good to know things. You know what I'm saying? So he actually does way more DPS than Sumbro does, from what I could tell. He might be able to do this fight on his own. Sumbro, on the other hand, needed a little bit of aid, but that's what we brought in our bro for. Now, there is some interesting mechanics with summoning in help for these boss fights. Uh, so we have this fog right here. Once we see that the phantom is being summoned, we can go ahead and enter the fog, and this will snapshot the boss's health at our current... Uh, number of companions. So we have one companion. If we had a second companion, the boss's health would scale up higher. But because we came in with only one additional helper in our world at that time, even though Sumbro is being summoned, the boss isn't quite scaled up as high as it could be. And that works for yourself too. You can hit, you know, if you only have one companion in the area, you could try to summon them in and enter the fog before they get into your world. And you'll be fighting a version of the boss as if 
you were the only player there. It looks like one lightning spear from Sunbro is gonna do a lot of damage there. Lotric just swinging his weapon wildly, cutting into the Bell Gargoyles, completely devastating the first one. The Bell Gargoyle has tagged in his tag team partner, but he's coming down at half health and already missing his tail. The fire not able to hit me, neither is that attack from the giant Axe Halberd. What is that? I don't know. It doesn't matter because the boss has been defeated. We gained the Gargoyle Helm. We should get a Sunlight Coin as well, a Sunlight Medal. Twenty batteries that'll come into play later on in our playthrough and our co-op buds have left. They've gone on to help out someone else and Jolly can now climb up the long ladder leading to the top of the Gargoyles Bell Tower and ring that bell just like you should if you would like to see more of this series because subscribing isn't enough. You also have to ring the bell and say you want to be notified about everything. So as far as the playthrough goes, we're just getting started. We're obviously not gonna be able to kill all bosses. And like I said, there's gonna be a little bit of gray area up ahead. Just trying to set your expectations right. I had a lot of fun trying to come up with my path for this challenge and I just wanted to share it. I didn't want that to be lost. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back soon with episode two. It'll be a lot easier. We're just gonna go kill a spider. You know, what could go wrong? Take care everybody. See you next time.